All right, so... Um, uh, That's what makes my day. <laughs> Thanks. All right, so what, what's the, this is uh, December the 1st. Uh, Steve, could you put, hey, thank you. So it's December the 1st, uh, 2011, and um, uh, we're talking about uh, a little bit about uh, uh, direct traffic, which is the best way to do Google-proof SEO. Who, who uses, everybody is writing content that's kind of targeting Google, right? Yes? But who doesn't have a website? Anybody? I'm a novice. You're a novice, okay. So everybody's got a website. Um, in general, I know Calvin, he's, he's got his recorder, buddy. I'm telling you what? I'm telling you. So um, a couple of uh, months ago, or about six weeks ago, I guess, um, a couple of guys invited me to go to a mastermind group, and they're all talking about SEO, how they do their SEO, and all the problems they're having with Google. And I'm like, well, I ain't ever got those problems because I don't use SEO that way. And the way I use SEO is to do um, um, is to to drive uh, uh, what's called direct traffic. In other words, where if you look in your Google Analytics, there's no referring domain. In other words, somebody types in um, Hannah. What's your project? What's your website? Um, the new uh, sorry, Modern Comfort. Modern Comfort. So, for for example, if somebody searched for Modern Comfort, is it Modern Comfort like reupholstery or? No, uh, Modern Comfort so, oh, okay. so upholstery is sustainable. Yeah, so in other words, if, if you, um, and it's moderncomforttx.com, yeah, so if, uh, if you're talking in a group or in a conversation with somebody and you tell them, you know, go to this domain for some reason, they type in, that's direct traffic. Or if, or if somebody, hey, Ann, or if somebody uh, clicks through an email, uh, so the, the the general consensus is nobody knows for sure, but the general consensus is that if somebody um, links to your domain uh, and they click through from a domain to your domain, that might be worth one extra traffic if it's a relevant backlink. In other words, if I've got an upholstery site and I link to your site, that's a relevant backlink. If I'm selling auto insurance, that ain't relevant. So both of us get penalized. But if it is relevant, uh, most people agree that's about a 1x uh, weight of uh, backlink. And uh, if you've got a uh, backlink for, from a .gov or .edu, that's about a 1,000x weight. So that's good. And the direct referent is someplace in the middle. Different people guess that it's between like a 10 weight and a 100 weight. So it's better than, than, um, uh, direct, than, uh, in, than uh, links from a domain. So the, the reason that Google um, considers direct traffic better is that they figure if somebody goes to all the trouble to type your domain in, then it's got to be real, right? It's just a simple way to tell spammers from real people. So what I, um, I made some notes this morning, and I, and I tried to figure out what I'd done to create the, um, um, the whole, uh, hey, Lauren. How's it? Uh, the whole um, uh, process that I use today, because it's been about a 10-year evolution. So here's the, I'm going to give you about kind of a step-by-step -step, uh, walkthrough of how to do this yourself. The first thing is I recommend you go to Amazon or Half Price Books and get a copy of 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing. It will cost you a whopping, I think they're on buck ninety-five on Amazon right now used. So, um, and at half price they're usually three, four, five bucks. I usually, whenever I'm in a half price bookstore and see them, I buy them all and just hand them out. They're such a good book. Uh, in there, there's one specific section. Yep. You haven't given me one. I've seen you every month. <laughs> Jeez. I hadn't given them out in a long time. Cal I've offended See, Calvin. Yeah. I'll tell you what, the, you, you know, every group, Why you you thought you're every in group there's some, some reprobate-ish, irreverent, <laughs> <laughs> reprehensible characters, and Calvin's one of them. Really? Just... And so, so, Calvin, I'll tell you what, I'm going to look around, and if I've got an extra one, I'm yeah. going to write your name on it. I'm going to you autograph it. it. I'm going to autograph it. I'm going to say, this is yeah. for Calvin, because he felt bad. Because I don't want you to feel and bad. I'll let you guys know on Facebook. Everybody. Yeah. He did uh, Man, it's a tough room today. <laughs> Woo. So anyway, the the big takeaway that our big win I got from 22 Laws of um, uh, Mutable Laws of Marketing, which I read, I think I got my first copy in 1994 when it published, uh, was they were talking about, you know, it's better to be first than best. 
And if you can't be first in your category, like you can't be first in health, it's too big a category. So you got to create some secondary market. So I thought, you know, for uh, several months, and I came up with radical health because that was a key word I could own. And now I've been um, working with that topic for so long, which is the next part of this, that uh, it would be pretty hard for anybody to knock me out of first position on Google for that. So that's the, the first thing is to pick a key phrase that you can own. It's better to be first than best. Even better to be best and first. So um, the old, old uh, marketing uh, rule that I use in my talks is that good marketing sells product and good product keeps product sold. Um, if you have good marketing, sell a bunch of product and have it all returned, that's no good. So it's better to have good marketing and good product. Um, so come up with a key phrase you can own, and hopefully that domain's available where you can actually register the key phrase as the domain, like um, uh, like some of the domains that I run are davidfavor.com, which is my hand, my name, uh, uh, Radical Health, Sunfire Superfoods, which is the superfood uh, branding that we use that Beats has a bunch of our products out here. Um, inside track party, wetware hacking is a uh, one that I've been camping on for a while. So the next rule of thumb is once you get a get a hold of a key phrase that you can own and that has a domain available, then uh, the next thing is you know it ain't rocket science. Work on it for ten years. It's just that simple. I mean, if you figure out something that, here's my rule, is I call it the 10 year rule, is you figure out what you've done for the last 10 years, almost every day without pay, and you don't read some internet marketing you know, squeeze page that says, oh, buy this thing and you'll be a billionaire in 10 days. No, 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 no. Figure out what you've done for the last 10 years, pick something out of that portfolio of assets that you know more about than anybody else, and that's what you tool your business around. Like, I mean, you guys know about martial arts, right? So you wouldn't want to go out and, you know, do some sort of, like, auto parts store or sell auto insurance, right? No, you do martial arts, right? Because that's what you know, and you've done that for... How long have you been doing that, Steve? 40 years. Long time, man. First time I met you was probably about 10 years ago when you were teaching your eyes kids. Way long ago. So for 40 years, I mean, do you think anybody can... Um, compete with you about your expertise and your niche. Yeah, there's no way that you can compete with 40 years of experience. It's just impossible. So you stick with that and you figure out how to, to come up with a keyword or key phrase that you can own that relates to your category and just keep working it because you're going to do martial arts for the rest of your life, right? It's not a, you know... Else. Yeah, it's what you, I mean. It's 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 more of what you are than um, you know something that you you know do for money, which is another really good point. Is when you're tooling your business, don't just make up something. Do what you are. In other words, figure out what you are, not who you are, but figure out what you are, and stick with that. Like I had some serious health challenges when I was young, and so health is like you know. I had to figure out how health worked to stay alive, and so I know about health, and so I stick with that as one of my primary categories. Uh, so uh, the, the time on your domain and also the time that you work on your project is sort of the other big uh, hitter. So figure out some key phrase you can own and then just put in the time. And better just to keep with something that you're already putting in the time on. So I, what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see, somebody got to watch how are we doing on time. Uh, it's 10.20. 10.20. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through. I just randomly wrote down about 15 or 20 different um, uh, direct traffic mechanisms uh, that I have used. And some of them I just recently learned about, uh, which I thought were really elegant. Um, so the first big thing on um, direct traffic is, is have a domain like um, uh, Hannah, yours is almost good enough like it's modern living tx modern comfort modern comfort tx yeah so a lot of people are going to maybe miss the tx they'll get a cool company here. yeah exactly <laughs> right so uh, if, if at all possible yeah if at all possible figure out uh, let's see i wrote down um, I guess I wrote it on a different piece of paper. What, what were the three things? I wrote down the three things about a domain is it should be rememberable and remarkable 
uh, and Googleable. <laughs> So, rememberable is like davidfavor.com is easy because that's my name. Radical Health is pretty easy to remember. Sunfire Superfoods is easy to remember, especially when people are looking at brand uh, branding logos. Um, so, you know, something that's easy to remember and also that you can communicate in conversation. Uh, you'll notice, how many people have noticed I have no business cards? Little trick I learned from Dan Kennedy. Um, if you don't have a business card, you automatically put up one step of one action step in front of a person. So that means that they have to remember who I am. They got to write something down, and then they got to go and uh, click in someplace and, and join a meetup group or email list. I don't. I nor do I even collect contact information anymore. I used to be a email hoe. I had a sheet of paper, and everybody I came in contact if, if I could touch you, you know, like the old network marketing thing, if I could touch you, you get pitched. <laughs> if, I could, if I could reach out and touch somebody, I would get their email address. If I had to hold them down and, you know, put my boot on their neck, and give me your email address. <laughs> that's what that first meeting was about. Yeah, that's what that is. <laughs> yeah. So Clint, is uh, he's in therapy right now to recover from the first meetup. I'm not feeling had. bad like Calvin. It's a different kind of bad. <laughs> he's, got, he's got the... He's got the physical scars to prove it. So anyway, we're trying to. We've got a, a program for Clint, and he's recovering. Um, so you know, figure out a, a, a domain that's uh, rememberable and remarkable are the two big things. Uh, so I'm going to run through a, a few um, uh, cool things here. Uh, the first one's networking. So be able to be able uh, to communicate your domain name quickly, and people remember it. Uh, the other thing is about networking. Um, how many people go to networking groups on a regular basis? Who, who? So yeah, I see Lee and Clint all the time. Calvin, you, I mean, you go to a few. Um, <laughs> one or two. One or two. <laughs> um, wizard tomorrow. Yeah. yeah so uh, who's going to the Wizard Academy tomorrow? Anybody? You guys? Mm. I might actually go. It's uh, one to five. Is it fall? I. I We'll get you a seat. Don't know. Yeah. Don't tell them I said so, but they're, they're way, they're to, we'll they're way to um, uh, say that you aren't coming is so poor that there's usually a few empty seats. So just, you know, show up and say, oh, I registered a couple of weeks ago. And it, <laughs> yeah, through the software. No, don't. Whatever you say, don't say David Favor said to scam the system. <laughs> better, better just to go register. So, um, uh, you know, practice your craft, your speaking and writing craft. Uh, you you know writing email writing newsletters so if your speaking craft is easy just go to networking and talk with people and once you get used to having conversations with individuals then you go to small groups and then large groups and on up after that uh, so um, participating in networking groups uh, mastermind groups brain trust groups there's all sorts of interesting people uh, putting things together like um, uh, I met Benji for the first time even though we've known about each other for like 10 years or something ridiculous um, at uh, Sean Collins Affiliate Summit Meetup. So here's an example of a networking, uh, how to use networking. So Sean, who, who, who doesn't know Sean Collins? Anybody don't know Sean? Okay, so Sean Collins runs Affiliate Summit. It's sort of the de facto conference for the affiliate marketing uh, space. This guy puts four to 5,000 people in a room paying $2,000 a piece. So people do the math. That's a pretty good chunk of, uh, you know, simple math. Uh, 5,000 times 2,000. That's a pretty good weekend. So Sean lives here in town. Also, Brett Papke runs PubCon, which is the second, uh, sort of the sister organization to Affiliate Summit. They're good buddies. And so Brett Tabke and Sean Collins both live here in Austin. So do you think it's a good idea to go to Sean Collins' meetup and meet Sean Collins, right? Oh, yeah, good. He's a, he's a really uh, nice guy to meet, uh, easy, very personal to work with. And uh, a bunch of us have been pushing on him for a couple of years now, and he's doing an affiliate summit here in Austin in May. So I recommend you be there. And if you have a topic to speak on that uh, has to do with uh, writing, speaking, blogging, technology, anything like that, sign up as a speaker. Practice your craft. All right. Um, so those are uh, those type of um, 
networking opportunities that create referrals. Like Sean, if he tells somebody about me, then he's got a lot of uh, social equity or social capital. And so people will naturally rank me in, in sort of the human SEO terms. If Sean Collins refers somebody to me as a, like a link, then I get a lot of uh, link juice passed to me from Sean because he's a good guy. Uh, so those are those are the those are the big ones are physical networking. Uh, now I'm going to run down a few uh, odd ones. Uh, classified ads. Uh, I was in a, a mastermind that uh, Keith Baxter and Perry Belcher put on here recently, and one of the guys there was talking about he runs um, ads in classified magazines like Penny Shop, Penny Savers, and Thrifty yeah. Nickel, and all those. And he looks for the cheapest ones he can buy, and he gives away something free simply to cause people to type in his link. Because if you go to Odex and hire a million, you know, Filipino women to click through, you know, type in what's your domain, Calvin? Is uh, extremely conditioned bodies. Yeah, extremely conditioned bodies. If Google sees a million people typing in extremelyconditionedbodies.com coming from Filipino IP addresses, yeah. they're going to say that Calvin's trying to s scam the game. So you don't want that. Uh, and that's how one of these guys was getting around it. His, he just goes all over the country, finds the cheapest paper media he can get, and just does huge media buys for, you know, pennies an issue. And so he's got this constant direct linking from all these places all over the country. Very, very smart. Um, the second that's one... the ranking factor. The number of people that directly access your site. That's worth about 10 to 100x of somebody that links through from irrelevant, actually through a link. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah. But you say they're giving away something for you and you guys to do something like downloadable, so you don't have to check. Like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Give something away, some sort of ebook or something that will um, uh, ge generate enough interest so people actually come and uh, will visit your website and go through. The, I mean, you, you pretty much have to give somebody a reason. I mean, if you if you just, I mean, it would now it would be interesting to take out ads with domains to do testing of your domain names. Like if you say, you know, uh, click radicalhealth.com for you know the best secret surprise you could ever have or something. You know, I don't know. It would be interesting to te to do. Um, in other words, to to put ads in classified because you get charged by the word, right? So the goal is to have the least amount of words. So if you could come up with a, um, uh, a simple way to, to create interest so people would click through without going into a big, long piece of copy in a classified ad, that's even better. Yeah, go ahead, Benji. Do you have any ideas on like where to go to find those to do a big media buying all at once? You know, um, I'm unsure about uh, big media buys. Um, there are some guys in town. You might talk. Do you know David Gonzalez? Sure. Uh, why don't you ask David who he would go to here in town? Uh, you met Brooke the other night at Sean's. Mm -hmm. Um, you might call Brooke uh, Schaff and just ask him if there's, you know, somebody that manages, uh, you know, just dirt cheap classified okay. ads. That's a good. That's a good question, and it's a question I've had too. I just yeah, haven't had time to a, research it. I've never heard of that technique. Before. Yeah. Uh, the other thing uh, that I use a lot of is um, everybody know what Google Alerts are, where you can camp on. So Google Alerts are. Uh, it's an email system that you. You camp on a topic, and every time a new web page comes online, you get emailed, this web page came online about your topic. So what I do is I publish a bunch of videos that I expect to be stolen. Another rule of thumb is always make your content so that your monetization flow, your money flow, expects for you to, everything to be stolen, and you capitalize on that. Because somebody steals your stuff and uses it, as long as you're... Your, uh, as long as the customers they're working with find their way back to you, that's fine. They're just, you know, doing free advertising for you. Referrals. Yeah, they're doing free referral marketing. So um, I run Google Alerts camped on all sorts of videos I've done, and the one that works the best is this Hurom Juicer video that I, it took me 20 minutes to record and another 10 minutes to edit and five minutes to publish, and it's the most stolen video I've got. I mean, people steal this thing all the time. And I get a Google alert that says this new, what, what I've got to set up is Google alerts on anything that's got to do with slow juicers or Huram juicers or um, I may even be camped on Breville as a keyword too. And so anybody, anytime somebody takes my video and embeds in what's called a money site, it's like a one page or two or three page site that's using my video to generate money for them, 
I go and I see that site and I go into their comment section because it's usually a blog and I type in, if you'd like more information about uh, recipes to use in your Hooram Slow Juicer or more about radical health, then, then Google radical health. Yeah. Um, and if you're going to use a domain, you can also say something like, uh, like um, modern comfort TX and then square brackets with dot DOT written out, com. So people can't click through it. And also, if you put a link in there, the scammers that are stealing your stuff may go in and delete your comment. So you get two, you get twofold win. They'll leave your comment in, and if uh, somebody reads that and they go to your site, it's a direct link. It's direct traffic. So that's a, you get a twofold bump up. Uh, and also, make sure you watermark your videos. All my videos are watermarked with something. So they can get watermark just means that it's got like radical health on the bottom or wetware hacking or inside track party or radical or uh, uh, so something that people find their way back to me. Um, so um, talk about the lower third. Yeah, the lower third it just has a watermark like a transparency written on the bottom of it. Uh, the, another really cool one that I haven't used yet that um, I've been uh, doing some uh, research on that looks pretty interesting is refrigerator magnets. How many people have refrigerator magnets? Like you get these door hanger things that have like 18... The realtor calendar? Lo, well, not the realtor calendars are useless, <laughs> right? Because you, they, they're a guy's picture and a calendar and you never there's no call to action. The ones I'm talking, I should have brought one. Uh, the best one I've got is this thing that's in my local zip code. Um, it's like 15 different craftsmen, like uh, who do you call when you got to have a sprinkler fixed or your roof fixed or your gutters cleaned or your lawn mowed or whatever. Um, and this guy went through and vetted some people, and then he took like 500 bucks a piece from them and printed up these magnets, and they stick on, and they stay there forever. Even Pat, and he does like 2010 one, 2011 one, but they stay there forever. So I've got this thing on my refrigerator, and I figured out um, in 2010 this year, I've sent probably two grand of business to the people on that magnet, doing like plumbing and sprinkler stuff and all sorts of stuff. So if you can figure out something to put on a refrigerator magnet that's a persistent, because that'll cost you two to three bucks to get manufactured and delivered to a residence, and then it's there forever, stuck right in front of their... So if you can give them something like uh, like um, Matt and Lauren do some health stuff, so if you could give somebody like the seven steps to losing one pound this week, I don't know. That, you know, something that's manageable. And, but it's, it causes them to stick it on their refrigerator so they look at the seven steps and even say right on there, put this on the front of your refrigerator so every time you open the refrigerator door you see this and you remember what to do next. Yeah. Right? So that's a refrigerator magnet. It's really cool. Um, uh, handouts and uh, e-books and books, uh, all sorts of print media. Um, who's read uh, Multiple Streams of Income by Bob Allen? That's a fascinating book. Um, the best thing about that book, I, I remember the first time I read it, I made it about 30 pages through, and I'm like, geez, how many times is this guy going to reference his domain? <laughs> so like every three pages, he's got like an asterisk in the middle of a section that refers back to http colon slash slash multiple streams of income dot com. And he's got a parenthesis like, for more information about this topic, go to the website below. And so the whole point of the book is to create direct traffic. It's you know it's a fascinating. It was one of the first uh, examples of that that I'd seen that uh, was uh, uh, so not blatant, but it was so methodical and planned out that every everything he would like almost go to the point of giving you a cliffhanger on how to finish out the topic, but you had to go to the website to get the last piece. And when you got to the website, it was free though. Don't be you know trying to bait and switch people where you know it's like all these emails that come out about dating tips or uh, internet marketing where you say, oh yeah, three se three or seven tips to da 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 da. And then what it really is is you got to buy this thing to get the real seven tips. Don't do that. That's so you get their it. email or no? So yeah, do you capture? You just had a direct link with the info or the email. Well, I mean, once they once they get to their once you get they get to your site, then how you convert them or what call to action you use to take them through your funnel is, is or gravity well is up to you. But even if you just give it away, they don't have to leave any information. That's you know what I found is when I force people to give me information, the people I get 
I have to eventually get rid of. And so what I do is I make it really hard to get connected with me. Like if somebody somebody will say, well, how do I get in touch with you? I say, well, go join InsideTrackParty.com slash tribe. Go join our meetup group and come to events. And if you'd like to pitch me on a deal, I expect to see your face for two or three times first. And otherwise, I don't talk to you because I don't know you. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, if you force people to take actions, like I, I never collect information anymore. I tell people go join a meetup group because that takes you know five minutes. And if they can't take five minutes and click a couple of links, I don't want to. I ain't going to do anything else. Right. Uh, uh, much less buy anything. Yeah. So you'll have a much smaller list, but in like, like one of the things I, uh, that's interesting to me when I have um, conversations with people in masterminds and brain trust is they, they've got their list, right, and double quotes. And, I, and it's like, oh, well, how many people are on your list? Oh, a quarter million people or 500,000 people. And my question is, how many people have bought in the last 30 days? Or uh, then it's mumble mumble, right? Then it's like, oh, well, you know, I don't know, a few thousand. Well, so the real list is only a few thousand. So my suggestion is get rid of the quarter million and go for the 2,000 or 5,000 or 10,000 that buy every day. And, you know, those are the people that are your bread and butter anyway. So who cares about the others? Just uh, put up, put up uh, hurdles that will get rid of them to begin with. Because if you don't get rid of them to begin with, you'll have to get rid of them after the fact some, some way. It's rather it's better just get rid of them up front. So it sounds like you're talking about organic traffic and not PPC or any, any of that stuff. Sort of yeah, I mean, my experience with PPC is it's very effective at generating customer lists, but every time I've done that, I've had to delete my email list because it pollutes my my list with all these people that just mess up my statistics. So, and statistics meaning how many people buy what every month. Um, so my preference is organic traffic, yeah. Okay. So Which organic traffic means in Google you got the AdWords over on the right side and organic search results in the left side, and I like left side traffic. Because also the other thing is if you if you pay zero dollars a month you can scale forever. If you pay zero dollars a month for your marketing you can never go upside down, right? You can never go broke. If you spend zero to make something, you've got an infinite ROI, return on investment. That's good. If you spend a bunch of money and it goes upside down, like back in the days before the Internet when we had to do direct mail, it was, I mean, I would send out direct mail. I'd spend all this money and I would just, you know, pray, please let there be enough income to at least pay for my direct mail campaign. So um, uh, luckily those days are, are over. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, I've got a note here about um, uh, domains here. Uh, the three C's, catchy, clear, and concise, which is kind of what I talked about before. So you can drop your domain names into audios and conversations and things like that. Uh, print media I talked about. Oh, another piece of print media is articles. Like uh, here in town, there are, oh, in Texas, there's all sorts of um, Physical magazines like Austin All Natural, uh, Natural Awakenings, uh, Indigo Sun, Austin Fit, Austin Women. Uh, there's all sorts of magazines. So, you know, go pitch proposals to those people to get in print. Because if you have to run through their editorial process, you'll become a better writer. Like if you write a, uh, you know, a poor article and send it to Michael Abedin at um, uh, Alts and All Natural, he will send it back and say, ah, no, go back and rewrite it. So it's, it's interesting to work with actual physical print media uh, publications because you'll, your writing will naturally uh, progress. Um, let's see, next up is... Um, um, the next step is live talk. So a as you refine your craft of speaking one-on-one -on -one and with small groups and larger groups, then what you can do is go one rung up, start your own meetup, and speak all the time. Or you can, uh, hey Emily, uh, you can network with other people that are running meetup groups which are always looking for speakers, like Anne Marie over here. Hi, Anne. She's always looking for good speakers. So what does that mean? You have to practice your craft and become a good speaker before Anne's going to put you in front of her group, right? Because the blend connection, I mean, she's cultivated that group and designed it so that the content that she provides uh, for holistic practitioners is at a really high level, and it's actionable and useful, clear, concise. 
So for you to pitch her to talk, you're going to have to you know, produce at that level. And even better is you produce at that level and people will notice you. Even better is if Ann comes and says, hey, will you talk? Right? So when you have meetup group uh, organizers pitching you to talk, that's good. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, flyers I kind of talked about a little bit before in print media. Writers is another interesting thing. If you're shipping physical goods, you can drop in the boxes writers. Uh, writers are just pieces of paper that have some sort of uh, information on them to keep the constant flow of information going with your best clients. Um, and then the last thing um, is uh, radio publicity. So who here besides Clint and me is doing radio publicity, radio interviews on a regular basis? Anybody? I wouldn't call them regular, but I, I did them in Albuquerque. Okay, well, but radio is pretty cool. Have you, so your ad in RTIR comes out this? Uh, is it's it right? like, yeah, 10, the mid-November issue. All right, so I haven't gotten that one yet. So, how, oh, you've got it on their website too. How did you book the? You you told me you had a couple of interviews that booked. Yeah, out of they that? called off for the print one. So oh. I did the one in Denver this morning. Oh, okay. So, so I you am, and I got another one tonight at six thirty-four. So that issue must have already come out then. Yeah. Oh, I had. I'm in December, so in November. Oh, it's the one that. Oh, gotcha. I'll have to go back and look at it. So, so Clint has drunk the internet or the uh, radio interview Kool Aid. Which is good Kool-Aid to drink. Uh, and this is what I'll uh, wrap up, uh, leave you with today, is um, radio interviewing and uh, radio publicity is, is the hands-down single best way that you can generate cash, period, because it's free. So, for example, like the database I use is all the stations or all the radio shows in this country. There are almost 2,000 of them now that reach 100,000 people per hour. Oh, person to the left gets to answer it. Oh, <laughs> so 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 if you if you do the math on a hundred thousand people in an hour, uh, I only do radio interviews that are in um, uh, prime uh, time and drive time traffic. So people are stuck in traffic, stop and go. They're stopped and they're listening to me for fifteen to thirty minutes. Now, if you could have a conversation with a hundred thousand people for fifteen minutes about your stuff. And they, they couldn't get a word in edgewise, right? You're just talking at them. They can't say anything. They have to sit there and listen. Do you think you could sell something? Anything. Oh, Lord, you could send them to an Amazon affiliate link selling juicers and be rich. So radio publicity is really cool. And um, what that means is to put together a press kit, which is a little, um, we don't really have time to go into that, but uh, it's uh, simple pieces like a press release, a... Um, uh, biography and suggested questions uh, and what you do is you build up a media kit and you send to producers of the shows and when they book you then you have access to these huge audiences and I ran the numbers here a few months ago um, when I was looking back over the years of all the things I've done and I figured out well simple math if I did three interviews a week at 100,000 people a pop that's 15 million people a year that's for free for, well, for zero dollars, it'll take me some time. But, you know, again, if you do something for free, you can never go upside down. So uh, for those of you who are um, uh, have been doing what you've been doing long enough that you just know your topic inside and out, like Steve, yeah, I mean, you could talk f about martial arts forever and how that applies to life, right? Which I think would be a really cool thing for you to do is like, you know, how to apply kung fu to life or something. Like Zen you know? and motorcycle. Yeah, kind of like Zen and yeah. the art of motorcycle repair or something like that. Um, and that that would be a um, like an evergreen topic. You could say, you know, how to, you know, the kung fu of Valentine's Day or the kung fu of New Year's resolutions yes. or the kung fu of, um, you know, uh, getting into your bikini in the summer. You know, it, it's a bridge topic. So it's how to use the, the discipline and the focus and building up internal fire for whatever you're doing in the external world. So that, you know, those are evergreen topics that, oh man, radio show hosts love that. So a radio show host, if you think about these guys, they're sitting in their office and they've got, especially if they've got like a two or three hour show a day, these guys are under the gun. They're looking for warm bodies to fog mirrors that can talk. And they, their criteria for vetting those people is, um, can be pretty low. 
<laughs> and so almost anybody um, can usually cultivate a relationship if you're willing to put in the time with some big name radio show hosts. And um, just the, the last uh, uh, wrap up point here, uh, when you're booking your radio shows, um, two things you should always do, hopefully you're doing this too, Clint, is the first thing you do when you get on the phone with somebody to book a, a radio show is the first thing you say is, before we get started, be sure and write down my hotline on your backup guest list. They're thinking to themselves, backup guests? I ain't never thought about that. That means when they have a guest cancel, they still got a show in five minutes. I've made a lot of money off people frantically calling me on the phone saying, dude, can you be on the phone in five minutes talking about something, anything? Because <laughs> I got, you know, thousands of people coming on a webinar or a teleconference or a radio show. Can you, you know, be there to fog the mirror, so to speak? And so if you uh, tell people... Most show hosts don't even have a backup list. They've never thought about it. So if you, if you are the only one on the backup guest list, you'll get a call. And the other thing is um, uh, work with the show host to figure out how to turn your uh, interview into a series of interviews. In other words, uh, start off with a uh, pitch of... Um, well, you know, this particular topic is so, the, the terrain of the body of information is so vast that, you know, we'd probably it'd be tough to cover everything in one show. Um, but if it goes well, you know, let me know. We'll turn it into a series and, you know, you can have an ongoing segment. And they'll love that because they're looking for free, they're looking for free content. And, you know, they're, they, they've got a, a run sheet for every show that says, I've got all these empty blocks. I've got to have somebody in this block. And if they work with Clint once and he turns out to work really well, they're going to go, gee, that Clint Evans guy, he's easy to work with. He freaking performs. Mm -hmm. When he's supposed to be on the line, he's there. We don't have to worry about it. Didn't sleep through. He didn't sleep through it. Also, make sure that um, anytime you're doing radio shows, it, big important thing, always have a physical hard landline, not a cell phone. Not a VoIP line, voice over IP, a physical copper line that if the freaking electricity goes out, it works. And go down to Best Buy and for 20 bucks buy a manual phone. One you plug in the wall, you pick up the handset, and it freaking works. Ask me how I know you should do this. I was supposed to be on a call that was supposed to go out to 80,000 people. The electricity went off. All I had was a, a uh, plug-in-the-wall phone. Never occurred to me. Now it does. Uh, so that's um, uh, the little tips on uh, radio interviews. So anyway, we'll, uh, what, uh, what time is it? Uh, anybody got a... You've got 1049. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll just randomly, if anybody has any questions, we'll just talk for a little while while Ann rounds up everybody. Anybody got any questions about direct traffic? Go ahead, Benji. Well, it, it goes back to what you were talking about in the beginning, and maybe you could talk about this too. You're talking about the weight of particular links. Yep. That uh, a regular backlink uh, is worth about one, you said one tenth to one one hundred. Well, of, yeah, of direct links. Yeah. And that's only backlinks that are relevant. If you go off and get spammy backlinks, those are even worse. Yeah. Don't do that. What if you jump up in page rank? What if you're getting PR? Oh, that's a good, uh, that's a good uh, point. So page rank, it appears that once you get above uh, page rank four, once you hit page rank four, then Google sort of becomes begins treating you like a... I, I think of it in Roman citizenry. You got the slaves and the plebes and the citizens, and then you got the senators and the generals. And once you get above about a PR4, you transition from a citizen to a senator. And you're treated more like a CNN, like, you know, CNN, YouTube. This, they got all sorts of random stuff on there. But if you link from there, you pass a lot of juice. In other words, you pass a lot of authority from them to you that boosts your page rank. So it appears that once you hit a page rank four, then uh, the consideration of what content you're publishing becomes uh, less extreme that you need to be in a relevant, very narrow category. So you can become a news site at that point, in other words. Cool. So how does that compare to, a, to direct traffic? Um, value well, direct traffic is still, I think, by far uh, the best traffic because you can control it. 
Like if you if you if you set up a gravity well that's producing uh, a conversion rate of like you spend a hundred dollars and you get two hundred out, then you know that you can just take that hundred dollars and spend on classified ads all over the place to drive direct traffic, and that's usually going to be a lot cheaper than pay per click. Yeah, probably a lot cheaper. Oh, another another really good direct traffic source, of course, is is um, uh, well, YouTube is a you could probably do direct traffic with YouTube comments, but Amazon is another really good place because Amazon you can't pass direct links, but you can put in there you know your keywords. Like if I put in radical health and somebody Google's it, I own the first page. If I put in my name someplace and somebody Google's me, I own the first three pages. So it's really important to to pick a, a key phrase that you can own. So if somebody Google's it, they don't end up like like uh, Hannah was saying that they end up at a pool company, right? right. So that's a really important thing when you're working with direct traffic is to figure out some uh, key phrase that you can own. So what was the Amazon one? Well, Amazon, you can just go into the Amazon reviews and just review stuff. And, you know, just do a review every day and, and talk about, uh, yeah, you know, I did this article on Radical Health the other day about this blender or this spiralizer or this knife set or whatever. Um, and tell them what to Google to get to. Well, you don't even have to tell them that. I mean, the people that are smart enough that you'd like for your customers will think to themselves, gee, if I'm reading this and I like this, I might ought to Google that. Do you want to put a link in? You don't want the slow person. Um, <laughs> hey, they're buyers. I don't think you could put links in uh, Google Amazon, reviews unless they've changed it. Um, Amazon. Yeah. Or Amazon. Yeah, Amazon strips those. And with YouTube, are those do follow or no follow they're no follow, but that doesn't really make that much difference anymore. Uh, someone's reading it. Because Google um, uh, still analyzes those no follows, so even if you put no follows in, uh, it still gets almost as much weight as uh, do follows now. So no follows means that you used to be if you put a no follow tag in links going off your site, it wouldn't pass any link juice to whoever was at the receiving end, and now it does. Because Google says, you know, if you're linking to somebody, it better be relevant, and there better be a reason. And if not, I'm going to penalize not only this guy, but this guy too. In other words, you got to link to relevant content, or everybody's getting penalized. So, and that's good. Anybody else got any one or two more questions, and then? What do you recommend to use to uh, capture leads? Capturing leads? Yeah. You Article, like say about the free giveaway, what's, what's best for your article? Are oh, you talking about the content to capture leads? My rule of thumb is you produce such uh, outrageously unique, relevant, actionable content that you know people have to follow you. Does it have to be in PDF form or video form or audio? Form? There, there's no no set. I've done experiments with all sorts yeah, of different it's, forms. Uh, now I could hacking was good, but that's. Yeah, so, so here's what I'm doing right now, um, and this is a good, uh, good item to wrap on. Is see, uh, Calvin's talking about what's the best format of content. The answer is all of it. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking any kind of audio recording and turning it into a videoized audio. In other words, it's got a single frame with a splash page so I can put it on YouTube. Yep. And any video I also convert into an audio. And then whether it's audio or video, I get a transcript made from a woman that I've been working with on Fiverr that does um, 12 minutes for $5. And she does a sparkling job. And she speaks English. She's actually an American. So, you know, there's no language barrier. I mean, that's a big thing if you try to work with, you know, somebody in Japan or the Philippines or Thailand because the language barrier, because we have a different sense of humor than they do. And we have a different set of colloquialisms than they do. So uh, the answer is every content, good content. So if you start, like if you start off with a PowerPoint presentation, make an audio and publish it all. If you start off with an audio or a video, then you transcribe it and publish it all. Cool. Good stuff. And I'll make this uh, recording uh, available. Um, I'll send out a, a note uh, when I've got the, the videoized audio, the audio, and the transcript done. Cool.